Okay, I'm Ricard Friberg, and, and now we're going to be looking at um, a figure from uh, chapter five in my microeconomics textbook, where we're going to be looking at ranking of bundles by a consumer. Okay. Let's see if we get there. There we go. Okay, so we have different bundles as given by a table that we illustrate here. So. This is a consumer, cares about two goods, services, entertainment, and food. So we're measuring units of entertainment on the vertical axis, units of food on the horizontal axis. And uh, you know we've illustrated a number of bundles, combinations of entertainment and food, okay? So here, bundle A, for instance, has you know four units of entertainment, or place for videos or uh, movies. Uh, so four units of entertainment and two units of food. Okay, so two, two dinners, say. So we have these different bundles and we want to be able to rank them. Where we're going with this? Well, we're going, want to say something about choice. How are people choosing? Um, we want to look at what we can afford, the constraints, but we also want to look at our preferences, what we like, how can we describe that? That is where we're at um, so far. So right now, we just want to say something, you know, what are the feelings or preferences uh, over these different bundles uh, by the consumer, okay? Or individual. So we've made some assumptions on preferences. Okay, we've said that they are complete, which means in this case, we're able to rank all bundles, right? Or, you know, we can say if bundle A is uh, better than bundle B, the consumer is indifferent between A and B, or if bundle B is better than bundle A, okay? Preferences are complete. We can, we can rank them all. Uh, we've also assumed that preferences are transitive, they hold in transit, right? So that if I know that A is better than B and B better than C, I can conclude that A is better than C, okay? We can have like chains of, of uh, preference relations. We don't get these kind of weird cycles where, you know, uh, A is preferred to B, but B to C and then C to A. Okay, that'd be strange. So transitivity rules that out. Okay, so, with that, you know, let's say what we can, uh, what can we say about these different preferences? So, or these different bundles. So um, we want to compare the different bundles here and see which one the consumer would prefer. So let us first compare C to D. Can we compare them? Can we say which one is preferred? Yes, we can. So uh, third assumption that we typically make on, on preferences is that they're non-satiated or more is better. Uh, you know, we prefer, prefer more leisure, more apples, more food, more entertainment. Um, so in this case, when we're comparing C to D, D has more of both goods here more of both goods, um, if more is better, you know, go for it. So D here would be preferred to C, okay? What about A to C? Well, you know, we're then trading off different things against each other. So A has more entertainment, uh, but less food, whereas C has more food and less entertainment. So, you know, we need to say something about how we value those different things, which might depend on the person, which might depend on, you know, uh, our mood for the day. Maybe I'm really hungry. I haven't, didn't eat anything last uh, yesterday. Like, you know, so a bundle with more food looks really appetizing. Um, so, um, you know, we can't necessarily uh, just without, we can't use more is better to, to rank these, uh, okay? So what we can do is we can introduce a new tool. The tool is what we call indifference curves. And these are curves then that 
combine that, um, or that tie together different bundles uh, between which the consumer is indifferent so that the consumer values equally, equally highly. Okay, so this is an indifference curve and it, you know, it doesn't need to go through A and C. It's just an assumption that we make here. Kind of convenient, okay? So if it is it's an indifference curve, as, as many names in economics, they're not very catchy, but they're descriptive. Uh, it's two bundles or you know, any bundle on the indifference curve uh, that the consumer is indifferent between. Okay, so it'd be equally happy if we wish uh, on, on each of those. Okay, so, you know, um, equally, equally well off of both of those, given the same level of utility. Um, preferences are complete. So there's gonna be, um, you know, very many of these kind of indifference curves here. So let's put one, um, put one um, here for instance. So it's another, you know, call this indifference curve one and this indifference curve. Number two, and there will be additional ones further up here. So, you know, the whole, the whole um, area here will be covered by, by indifference curves. Um, say we want to compare C to B here, for instance, can we do that? Yes. So again, we're trading off, you know, different bundles against each other. I mean, B has more entertainment, but less food than C. So how can we compare them? Well, here, uh, the concept of indifference curves really helps us and transitivity. So we know that A and C are you know, on the same indifference curve. So the consumer is indifferent between them. Uh, we know that G is preferred to A. Why? Because more is better. Uh, G contains more of both goods, uh, more of all goods than what A does. So it should be preferred. And B, the consumer is indifferent between B and G. Okay, so with that chain, we can say, well, you know, from that, we can deduce that B is preferred to C. Okay. So this shows how using indifference curves allow us to rank uh, different bundles to say you know, what we prefer uh, the most. And then typically, or typically, I mean, uh, indifference curves that are further from the origin are preferred, okay? So it's not necessarily bundles that are further from the origin that are preferred, but indifference curves that are further from the origin are preferred by by um, by the consumer. Okay. Um, 